All right, this one is about Miss Jerry and Miss Jamie. So, uh, Miss Jerry used to date a guy named Ron Reader. And when they broke up, I helped Miss Jerry move out of Ron Reader's house. At the time, it was a big old thing to do about how Ron Reader was a violent, angry person all the time, and how he had thrown a soda bottle at Miss Jerry, and it barely missed her head, and so on and so forth. And so she was scared, and she was scared for her and her kids, and needed to move out. So I helped her move out. That's what friends are for, right? So then, Miss Lana, she's busy talking shit all the time about Ron Reader, how terrible a person he is, and... When my teeth were so infected and so messed up that I I had to get something done, Ron Reader actually picked me up at the request of Miss Jerry, and we went to Alliance, Nebraska, where Ron Reader lived, and there's a lake out there, and they were camping. Well, Miss Jerry, she was out there thinking about getting back together with Ron. <clears throat> well, things changed. She was saying, oh, well, you know, he he was just talking with his hands like he always does, and he accidentally knocked the soda bottle over, and basically the story was something completely different because she was getting back together with him. And there was also the fact that she didn't want Lana to know because, well, Lana is very, very opinionated. So what ended up happening with that situation is that Miss Jerry did get back together with Ron, and it didn't last very long, and they broke up again. But I helped Miss Jerry move a grand total of seven times, because every guy that she moved in with was some terrible excuse for a human being, and she kept on bouncing back and forth between the same three guys. Ron Reeder, a guy named David, and a guy named Andrew Buchter. Reeder and Buchter... <laughs> I guess there's a theme there, huh? So, uh, basically, this is something that I've encountered many times in my life, where women will completely trash talk a dude about how terrible a person he is, and then when they get back together with him, you guys are seeing where this going already, don't you? They get back together with him, he wasn't so bad, and they blew it out of proportion, and so on and so forth. But meanwhile, they don't pay attention to the fact that that really could destroy a man's life. Same issue with Jamie. Jamie was all about how terrible James was, and so on and so forth. And now that I know that her and James got back together, um, well, it makes perfect sense why she was doing what she was doing but also the fact that she had two boyfriends at the same time also helps to explain why she was doing what she was doing. Now, a lot of the reason for this is that this has been an ongoing issue. Me and James were going to handle it like adults. Jamie was still playing, though, so there was zero chance of it being handled like adults. Zero. Now... Just like Miss Jerry was afraid of what Lana would think if she knew that Miss Jerry and Ron were getting back together. That's kind of the same bullshit that Miss Jamie was doing with me. She didn't want me to know that her and James were back together. For good reason. After telling somebody such terrible things about another human being, you don't want that judgment, do you? Meanwhile, I was trying to have an adult conversation with James, and James wanted to have an adult conversation with me, and since Jamie was the one who was playing, she's the one who needed to sit down with us and hash it out. Jamie was unwilling to do that because she got busted in a lie, or rather didn't want to get busted in a lie, and that's where communication between me and James really needed to happen. Now, James and I agreed that we would take care of all of this as adults after uh, the whole Natalie situation was over. The Natalie situation is nowhere near over. 
and James, just like the Bollingers, like Alicia. Oh, well, it, it's not my fault. I didn't do it. Really, James. Let me explain to you something. When other people do things, your family, for example, when they're doing stuff and you're hiding behind the fact that you're not the one harassing me, well, the fact is, Seth is still harassing me. And that's why I keep speaking out. Now, he wasn't just harassing me on posts about you. He was harassing me on anyone that he just happens to not like the title of. You're a this, and you're a that, and you're a liar, and you're a slanderer, and so on and so forth. Well, the fact is, the parts where I slandered somebody's name, I admitted to. Yes, I spread that rumor that Miss Jamie was selling me. And why did she sell me that? Why was she selling me that rumor? You'd have to ask her. But it's not difficult to tell people's motivations. Now, with Jamie, she leads a lot of dudes on, and I'm not talking about leading them on in the way that Devin Cockerell did or Natalie Bollinger, where they led on that they were going to talk to me. I'm talking about leading them on by the balls. Jamie, when she was here in chapel before she left, she was playing six different dudes at once, and it got overwhelming for her, and she wanted to leave and start somewhere new. Well, the problem is, Jamie is still a player no matter where she's at. And I do feel bad for James getting played, and I feel shitty for me getting played. But we were played for different reasons. Jamie wanted to get free stuff out of James. She claimed that she paid James for that computer. James claimed that he gave it to her. And that's a lot of stuff that is really a pain in my ass. See, if Jamie had admitted that her and James were dating again, well, me and James probably could have sat down and had an adult conversation, but not with Jamie. Because Jamie, no matter what, is a player. That's just what she is. Now, I do feel that this is an important trait for women to learn. But at the same time, I also think that it's something that it's important for men to be aware of. I did the things that I did because I was manipulated by Jamie. And that was the whole point. It wasn't that James is some terrible excuse for a human being. It's the fact that I went public about what Jamie had told me about him because I was afraid for her and her son because of the way that she painted the scenario. Just like Lana was not real happy about Miss Jerry getting back together with Ronald Reeder after the story that Miss Jerry had painted of what a terrible person Ron was. But was he really? I thought Ron was a pretty nice feller. Also, there's uh, Tom Payne. That's Amanda Payne's dad and Jerry's ex-husband and... Jackie Payne Ballou's uncle. I like Tom. I have never seen anything out of Tom that would make me believe that he would go doing the things that Miss Jerry was claiming. <laughs> Miss Jerry claimed that they broke up because Tom wouldn't give her a blowjob and he was backing her into a corner and punching the wall in front of her and scaring the shit out of her. You see where this is going, right? Tom Payne is one of those people who commented on Jackie Payne Blue's post. Now, he didn't say anything terrible. He said uh, to be careful because I was trying to get a video camera to make the cops do their jobs. <laughs> Imagine that. There's a lot of wicked women out there who manipulate good men, and they think they have to tell us some terrible sob story to get it. They don't. I'm a good man. You want help moving out of that shitty situation. You don't have to give me all the details. Just tell me you need help. I show up and I help. Now, as far as 
James bruising up Jamie's back. Jamie's back was bruised as fuck. And that's something that, regardless of what Seth wants to say, and regardless of what anyone else wants to say, it's a fact. I saw it with my own two eyes. Now, as far as slandering people, that's not actually something I do. Now, it is something that I have done. When I said those terrible things about James, it's because Jamie had told me those things. Now, I grew up in the system with little girls who had been raped and molested by their families. And while I was in the system, I was raped and molested. Not by my family, though. My family didn't give two shits. They'd already signed my life away. So I take rape and child molestation very seriously. I take child abuse very seriously. If you're going to tell me something like that about somebody, I'm going to remember that shit. If you're beaten on and you have a bruise that big, I'm going to remember that shit. Now, if you want to downplay it because you got back together with him, hey, that's on you. That is 100% on you. But the fact is, don't play me. I'm going to speak out. I'm going to let people know that you're a player. What Miss Jerry did, bouncing back and forth between one penis and another, she's got the same opinion as Lana and Jamie. And that's, they won't date a dude who won't have sex with them. Why would they? Jamie, she gets horny all the time. Lana is horny all the time. Miss Jerry is horny all the time. Now, for me, not willing to have sex with any of them, yeah, it does create a little bit of an issue there. I don't feel it's an issue. I don't feel that it should be an issue. How many times have I tried having sex with Miss Jerry? That would be a grand total of zero. I helped Miss Jerry raise her kids. I helped Miss Jerry feed her kids. I helped Miss Jerry move often. Now, I felt that our friendship was a mutual thing. But instead, it's a, no, Sean, I helped you, I helped you with this, and I helped you with that, as if I had never done anything for the woman. As if I hadn't spent months spending almost every dollar that I had to make sure that her and her children had food. And she had a job at the time. But that's the thing, is that I didn't want any of this to happen. None of it. At the same time, Miss Jamie, right before uh, Natalie died, presenting James as if she was afraid that he would come over to her house and fucking kill her. And then she doesn't answer her phone. She is going to call me once a week to let me know she's all right. But then she didn't answer her phone for three weeks, and I was scared shitless. I didn't know what the fuck happened to her. I didn't know what happened to her son. I was scared because the last time that we had talked, she had let me know how scared she was of being in the same town as James. And so I did something desperate. If something happened to Jamie, I wanted to make sure that James got caught. Well, it turned out that nothing happened to Jamie. She was just busy playing. She didn't give a shit about how much I was worrying. And I'm not supposed to worry about people I care about, right? I'm not supposed to worry about people when they tell me that they're afraid for their lives and for their family's lives, right? I'm not supposed to. Is that what the situation is? Sorry, that's not how it works, dumbass. So, it was a messed up situation for me, and it was obviously a messed up situation for James. And Jamie getting busted playing, man, that, that has to suck. But we all knew she was a player. Myself, Hayden, James, we all knew it. The fact is, with me, she had to be a little bit more manipulative. She had to use her son to manipulate me. Now, when she said that James came over to her house and it was my fault because I had let him know where she was, James had something different to say about that scenario altogether. James said, well, Jamie called me over because 
she was sick and I brought her some soup. And Jamie's son had a different story to say about that too. He said that the first couple of times that James came back over to the house, he didn't even leave his room because he was scared of James. Imagine that. Why would Zyler be afraid of James? It's a good question. Now the fact is, none of this should have ever been out in public. It's not something that I ever should have been tortured physically or emotionally over. And Jamie should have called me back. She should have let me know that her and the boy were safe. <sighs> Telling me that James came over to her house because of me and I needed to fix it. Those were her exact words. You need to fix it. How am I supposed to fix it? She's the one playing. Fucking nut jobs.